Yesterday, there was sun and there was rain. Beauty in the mundane. Oh, oh, oh. I've the... never been to this part of Heathrow Terminal 2 before, so that's exciting. Hello everybody, welcome to my channel Backpacking Bananas. My name is Christiane and I am currently at Heathrow Terminal 2 if you didn't know, which you definitely do if you've seen the beginning of this video. Um, I am on my way to Bogota, Colombia on a direct flight, but actually just for a layover because I'm going to be traveling South America, starting in Bolivia and then I'm going to be working my way up overland from Bolivia to Ecuador through Peru. It's going to be one hell of a journey and I I am at the start right now in oh I've gone the lift so that's why I'm confused good getting lost in airports already <laughs> but in order to get to Bolivia um, there's no direct flights from London Heathrow the most direct way is to go via Bogota Colombia and normally they have a seven I think the, the shortest layover you can have is like a 17 hour layover but I thought that's a bit of an awkward time to have a layover it's not really long enough to have a bit of fun but it's too long to just stay in the airport so I decided to extend the layover and I'm going to be in Bogota for like two or three days which is really really exciting because it's not my first time in Colombia not my first time in Bogota I even have some friends there I don't know if they're around but I'm going to see if they are to meet up with and I'm just excited to be back in the country of salsa it's good it's really really good I'm really looking forward to this trip but first I've got to catch this flight Welcome to Bogota, Colombia, everybody. I am very, very happy to be here. The flight was actually like mega on time. In fact, it was almost like arriving half an hour to an hour early, which is quite nice. So I've got to my hotel room just before 4 a.m., which is very late, but I was anticipating to be even later, so I'm actually all right. I chose this hotel. It's bougie. I mean, I call myself a backpacker, but I just booked myself into this because I knew I was gonna be tired. I knew it was gonna be the middle of the night and I didn't wanna travel far and I just wanna get work done, have somewhere with reliable Wi-Fi where I can just <laughs> settle and relax before going out adventuring the next day. So this is the courtyard by Marriott um, at Bogota Airport. Yeah, it's bougie. And to be honest, I think, do you know what? I think I'm gonna shower. I'm gonna shower before I, I take a nap. I'm not that, tired though because I actually slept a full seven hours on the flight and in England right now it's 9am or it might even be 10am no it's 9am in England right now so it's <laughs> it's morning time but I definitely think I do just want to rest relax get some work done that is the plan of action but I'm very happy to be here that was very very smooth so I'll catch up with you when I've refreshed a little bit. Hello, hello. So it is a little bit later and I did actually end up napping. I wasn't expecting to because when I first arrived, I wasn't really tired at all. And then I kind of was just lolling about for two hours on my phone, catching up with people, FaceTimed my sister. And then I just got really sleepy, even though it would have been like past midday at that point in the UK. So I had like a two hour nap, which I actually think was really good. Just catching up on whatever sleep I would have missed on the plane. Um, and then I realized I had an included breakfast in the hotel. So I went down and enjoyed that. And now I've just called them um, asking if I can have a late checkout. And they were like, yeah, no problem. So I'm very happy. I'm, all, I'm just really glad that I chose to book myself into just this nice little place to settle into Bogota for a few hours. Like for me, I just think it's fully worth it. And the Wi-Fi is great here. And so now I am trying to be a bit productive and get a little bit of work done. You know, just make the most of this free time that I have in Bogota, to be honest. I'm not gonna have a whole lot of time to like really, really explore, but I was having a little think earlier and maybe, just maybe, I will climb up Montserrat because I got the cable car last time, which was great, but I seem to remember that you can climb up. So maybe that would be a good little adventure for me over the next couple of days, but we'll see. 
we shall definitely see. And on the topic of being connected to the internet and it being very good Wi-Fi, I'd like to introduce you to the sponsors of today's video, Surfshark. Now, Surfshark are a VPN, which stands for Virtual Private Network, which has a whole host of benefits, but one that I feel is so, so relevant to especially travelers is that when you are connected to public Wi-Fi networks, for example, in an airport or in a hotel with an open network, your device is actually at risk of being hacked. However, with the click of a button, you can switch Surfshark on and it acts as a virtual shield on your connection to stop any hackers getting in. So this reason in itself is enough for anyone to know that they should be having a VPN on their devices in 2022. But what Surfshark can also do is change the virtual location of your device to anywhere you want in the world with just the click of a button. And this is good because it can give you access to media or services that may not be available in the country that you're currently in. Or you can access things like the US Netflix, which has the biggest catalog of movies and TV shows in the whole world. Literally with just the click of a button, it is so easy. And Surfshark are one of the only VPNs which you can have on an unlimited number of your devices with just the one account. So you can use it on your laptop, on your iPad, on your phone, and you don't have to pay anything more and I have an amazing discount code for you as usual where you can get 83% off plus an extra three months for free when you use my code backpacking or using the link in the description. So, hello, I want to try and make myself a coffee. And um, they've got this coffee machine and then in here, you've got Juan Valdez pods. Um, now, if you haven't been to Colombia, you may not know that Juan Valdez is kind of like the Starbucks of Colombia but actually better, in my opinion. Obviously, Colombia is uh, one of the biggest producers of incredible coffee in the world. So let's see how we go with this. I wonder if I put it in here. It doesn't feel like a pod. Brew basket. God, it's times like this where I really feel stupid. Oh, okay, so I've got to fill that with water. All right. Fill water tank with cold water. Place cup or mark on till the base. A coffee pod in the brew basket but I cannot how do I open oh, how do I oh that's the brew basket let's fill it with some cold water from the mini bar and then we stick our mug that's what the pod looks like it's a bit like a tea bag Tea bag in like that. It's not a tea bag. It's a brew basket. Maybe. Oops. Maybe it's plugged in. Maybe this is the on button. <gasps> oh. Oh. And now we wait. I guess. Oh, there's a dribble. My money don't dribble, dribble. My money do dribble, dribble in this case because <laughs> I paid for that water from the mini bar. <sighs> I told you these sheet masks would come in handy. And suddenly I am in a new location. I wanted to stay for my next two days somewhere closer in town and I wanted to try out a new hostel. So I'm staying at the Viajero Bogota Hotel and Spa. I love the Viajero hostels. I stayed, the one in Cali is the best. And then I stayed in the one in Salento as well a few years ago, which was also very good. And so I've put myself into a private room because I am a bougie backpacker now. Though that's not going to be the constant for this whole backpacking trip, by the way. I think it's just because it was a layover, I wasn't bothered about making loads of friends, but I wanted to stay somewhere that might be quite social. So that's the reason I'm staying in private rooms now, but I'm sure as I get settled in to the backpacking life, I will be back to dorm room life. Don't you worry. Um, but my private room is very nice here. We've got a nice little full length mirror, desk area. Um, this is where I've opened up my backpack. Nice big double bed with a window and a wardrobe and an ensuite as well. The receptionist did speak to me entirely in Spanish and I got the majority of it. Obviously I could have said to her, oh, can you, can you do it in English? But I really want to try and like push myself and try and understand and learn. The only thing I didn't quite understand is what she was saying about the spa. Cause I have a feeling that the spa here is included for private room 
guests. Maybe I will have to go back down later and clarify that, but I understood everything else that she said. So that's really, really good. And I was having a good conversation in Spanish with the taxi driver. And do you know what? Just being able to have these conversations just makes me so, so happy because if you've seen the video where I'm talking about like about why I chose to come to South America for this trip is because I want to practice my Spanish. And so just to kind of be thrown into it on the first day, just like really makes me happy, uh, even though it's challenging, of course. Um, but you know, that's, that's what you got to do. That's what backpacking is all about. It's about challenging yourself. Honestly, I'm going to be quite boring for the rest of the day. I've got a shitload of work to do, but I would like to go hiking in the morning. So the last time I was in Bogota, I got the cable car up to Montserrat, which is the kind of big famous mountain that's quite literally in the city centre or just to the side of it. It's very, very popular to go up there. You've got a church up there and shops, but there's also a hiking trail to get up there. It doesn't, it's not too long a distance, but it's 800, over 800 metres of elevation to go there and back. So it would be quite a challenge. So I'm thinking of doing that in the morning and, and the weather, it doesn't look like it's going to rain in the morning. So that should be okay. But for right now, I'm just going to get some work done, settle in and yeah, enjoy this room. Good morning, everybody. Can I show you something? That was my sleep last night. I slept for 11 hours. Ha! It was like 7 p.m. and I just felt so tired. And so I just really quickly grabbed myself like some sushi takeaway um, ordering like on the Rappi app. And then as soon as I'd eaten it, I went straight to sleep and I slept right through till 7 a.m. this morning, which was just glorious. It really, really was. And now I'm ready to go on that hike that I said I was going to go on. I uh, still want to go on it. So this is the outfit I've just got changed into. I've got like my kind of running top and I've actually put my sports bra on underneath as well, just in case I want to run. I don't think I am going to want to run. I've got my leggings on, my trail running shoes, and my North Face jumper, and I'm actually going to open this up for the first time. Well, at least for the first time on camera. I've seen it opened out in the store. Oh god, I hope I remember how I just did that for when I have to put it back away again. Great! Okay, so this is my new foldable backpack, and to be fair, I'm not gonna be putting a lot in it right now, but I did just think that I wanted to put a snack in it. I wanna put some water in it. It's nine degrees right now, that is quite chilly. Okay, so maybe I put my, oh, I'll tell you what, I'll put my raincoat in there. It's not supposed to rain. It's not supposed to be sunny either, but it's not supposed to rain. But I feel like the raincoat would probably be the best thing. And then obviously if I get really warm, I can take this off as well. It's so cute. I absolutely love it and I feel like it'll look even better when I've, you know, actually filled it up a little bit so it looks a little bit filler. Oh, it's such a cute little adventure backpack. I really, really like it. Yeah, gonna head off now, gonna be following the all trails. I do believe that there is gonna be a Starbucks on the way to the start point of the hike. So I'm definitely gonna stop there and get a coffee and maybe a little bite to eat or just something to bring along with me. But yeah, it's 8.03 in the morning. Let's go! So this is the mountain I am about to climb in front of us and you can see, you can see the church of Montserrat at the top. Or is it Montserrat? That's what I don't know. You can also see the cable car which goes up and that is what I got last time. But today we're walking. Okay, this is the start point for the Montserrat hike. It's way busier than I was expecting. I don't know why I was expecting it not to be busy, but it is. And it says that it opens at 5 a.m. and actually closes at 1 p.m. So I'm really glad I came in the morning actually. Otherwise, probably would have just got denied. So anyway, we're gonna start the all trails. Not that I think I need to because everyone's walking in the same direction. But I'm gonna start that now. This is a real event, everyone really stretches to go up here. I mean, understandably, it's like 800 meters of elevation, which is huge over a fairly short distance. I'm very quickly realizing, <laughs> like very quickly realizing that I'm gonna have to walk this slower than I was hoping because the elevation at the bottom is already 2,600 meters, which is already pretty high in altitude. So basically, I'm already out of breath and I've been going for two minutes. So this route is so popular that they literally do have people selling you food and drink along the way and ice cream. Don't think I'm ready for that just yet. Jesus Christ. So 
So we've done 750 meters there. But we've got to get all the way up there. We've done 1,710 meters in distance. There's 2,350 meters in total from the start of the track. So that means about 600, 600 meters left. That's fine, I can do that. Here we go. Here's the church at the top of Monserrate. That was hands down the most humbling hike that I've done in a long time. I was not expecting to struggle that much. So I started the all trails at the bottom of the start of the trail. I'm gonna pause it right now. Oh, pause, there we go. Actually, it's not what I, quite what I was expecting. That took me one hour and eight minutes to get from the bottom to the top. The distance was 2.5 kilometers, which was kind of what we were expecting. And the elevation gain was 468 meters. I don't know why I thought that that was gonna be like 800 meters, but hey ho. Great, okay, well I'm probably gonna stay at the top for a little bit of time now. At least like 15 minutes or so and just have a little wander around. I know there's some shops up here. This isn't actually my first time up here. I don't know if I mentioned last time I was in Bogota, I came up to Montserrat, but on the cable car, the easy way of getting up to the top. So I kind of actually do know my way around the top here. So I'll have a little wander and then when I feel ready, I'll make my way back down. But my God, I, so I like ran up and down hills in the Brecon Beacons like a week ago for like 18 kilometers and I was feeling so fit and I did it so well. This has just humbled me to the max, but I can only imagine it's just because of the elevation. But to be honest, this is what I need. This is what I need because I'm gonna be going to La Paz, which is super high in elevation. I'm gonna be doing Machu Picchu, which is super high in elevation as well. So I need this acclimatization. This is good for me. And in fact, I think I'm gonna do this exact same hike tomorrow morning as well. I think that's good for me. Anyway, let's have a wonder. This is the market at the top of Montserrat. There's loads of cool things and actually, do you know what? I think I want to buy a necklace because for some reason I don't have a necklace and I feel like I need one for the start of this South America backpacking trip. So let's find myself a necklace. Here we go. Got a little black star. We know I love stars. Um, I'm not absolutely in love with it, but it was ocho mil pesos, which is I think about one pound 60, I think. And yeah, I guess I'll just have it on until I see anything that I prefer. All right, it's 10 a.m. and I think it's time to go back down. So we're going to resume, resume the old trails. Put that back in my, uh, put it back in my little uh, bum bag. Very little bum bag. And I am also going to resume my Apple watch. Let's head back down. Back at the start. Pause. Finish. One hour and 27 minutes. See, that's hilarious. That means it only took me 20 minutes to get back down to the bottom. One hour and eight minutes to get to the top. 20 minutes to get down to the bottom. I was running half the way though. So much easier when you're going down, obviously. Great. Now I'm just going to continue walking back to my accommodation to be a hero. <laughs> two hours exactly and fantastic and here we are back in my hotel room i am feeling very very proud of myself and also good outfit if i do say so myself loving the backpack it was obviously bouncy a bit when i tried to run but i could not fit you know that running vest that i've got with the little i couldn't fit it in my backpack understandably so even if we're running we're gonna have to go with a bit of bounce with this backpack but so from Viajero Hostel to go to the start of the hike up 
down and then back, it was seven kilometers exactly and it took me two hours exactly. And that does not include the little 10 minute pause I had when I went shopping at the top. But I'm feeling very proud of myself. I'm feeling very sweaty and I am gonna have a shower now. I've come to this very cool little poke restaurant, which is really, really close to where I'm staying. I think it's just called Poke City U. City U is like the shopping center that it's in. And I've got myself an Ebi bowl, which has some gamarones. What is that in English? Prawns. Oh my God, I actually remembered the Spanish name before I remembered the English name. It's got prawns and avocado and corn and rice. Um, and I asked for it sin cilantro because I do not like cilantro. What's that in the English way of saying it? I know what it is, but I can't think of it right now. <laughs> how, have I, how have I adapted this quickly to be forgetting English names to things? But I've just brought my laptop here. You're balancing on my laptop right now. I'm um, gonna get a little bit of work done. A little bit of work done in a nicer setting. So I'm not just in my room the whole day, but I will be working for the rest of the day. So I just grabbed myself a Starbucks on the way uh, back to the hotel to have as I am working in my room this afternoon. And as I was leaving the store, I looked, I actually looked to see if they spelled my name correctly. They wrote Christine and then I also saw underneath written Que Oso, Que Ojos Tan Bellas. That's sweet, isn't it? Ever the romantics, the Colombians. <laughs> All right, everyone, I am setting off to literally go do the exact same hike again as I did yesterday in the exact same outfit, except I'm just setting off one hour earlier because I want to make sure that I'm back in this hotel room with plenty of time to pack my bags and have a shower before checkout, which is at 11 a.m. So it's 0708 right now in the morning eight past seven, which is quite early. Luckily, I'm still jet lagged, so waking up early is a breeze. Thank goodness for that. I don't think I'm gonna bring my GoPro on this hike just because I had to hold it last time, so I'll just film a little bit on my phone, and let's go. Look at this, this is the road leading up to Montserrat, and I'd say it's even busier today. Thinking it was busy yesterday. No, no, today is ridiculous. I made it, guys, and I did even better. I got to the top in 52 minutes. Yesterday, that took me an hour and eight minutes. So I'm really, really pleased and satisfied with myself. I feel like I've redeemed myself now, and um, and it was all worth it. Tee -hee. That was hard. Oh my god, it was hard. Just as hard as yesterday, if not harder, because I was pushing myself harder. <laughs> I did do a couple of stops like I did last time, and I tried to do them in the same place as yesterday to kind of recognize where I was, but I just spent less time on the breaks, and I was just drinking water. What did help is that I didn't have the coffee this morning, so I wasn't holding that, and that probably helped my speed a little bit. But I'd love a coffee now. I don't think I'm gonna get one at the top, though, because I'm just gonna run back down now, but I'll probably get one right at the bottom just before the hostel at like Juan Valdez or something. All right, I am back, ladies and gentlemen, feeling very accomplished. That is exactly what I wanted out of this morning. So coming down took me a little bit longer than going up simply just because of how saturated with people the trail was. It was so hard to overtake. I've never seen anything like it. In fact, I would go as far to say that is the busiest hiking trail that I've ever been on in the entire world. It was just full of people the whole way. So if you wanted to climb Montserrat with a bit of speed, I would advise not going on a Sunday because it was just outrageous. But also like quite a nice atmosphere, like with everyone there. Also the Colombians are just built different. They're just climbing it in like jeans and a jumper. And I'm here with like all the gear and no idea. It's mad. And yeah, those people that were crawling up as well. I mean, I know it's like a religious thing, but like what, how, <laughs> why? Anyway none of my business. And also if you're gonna climb Montserrat, do bring a lot of water with you. However, if you forget, just make sure you've got a bit of cash on you because they are selling water and snacks pretty much the whole way up to the top, which is really, really nice. So I didn't feel like 
I had to limit myself on water because I was gonna run out. Saying that, I didn't even run out of my water anyway, but you know, I feel like those little details are good to know. So it's not open every day. I think it's closed one day of the week. It might be Tuesday or something. And the trail is only open in the mornings from like 5 a.m to 1 p.m. So don't go thinking that you're gonna hike the Monserrate Trail in the afternoon because it's gonna be closed. Um, and in terms of safety, there is literally police all the way up the trail. There's police everywhere. And so I personally, as a solo female, felt very, very safe. Um, and obviously you're not doing it in the dark either because they're closing the trail to make sure that no one's left doing it in the dark. So yeah, it's fab. And now it quarter past nine. So that gives me an hour three quarters which is lovely just to shower in here pack my bag before check out at 11 um, but then my flight's not till like 9 p.m this evening so i've got a bit of time to chill today sorry for the rather large fast forward but I am now in Bolivia, ladies and gentlemen. I actually didn't film any of the plane ride because I was so tired. I literally just slept, even though it was only like four hours. But anyway, uh, that's going to be the end of this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I got up to on my three day layover in Bogota. I had a really, really nice time to be fair. Like I didn't go salsa dancing like I thought I might, but I hiked a lot, I slept a lot, and I got a fair amount of work done which I would say is a very productive and fun layover, <laughs> in my opinion. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see you in the next one where I will be here in Bolivia to start the brand new backpacking series. See you then, bye.